So, folks, this is interesting. This is an image of Governor Ron DeSantis and Hannity on the right-hand side. And Hannity, <laughs> Hannity's got this look like, huh, really? But the title of this article is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is gunning for his own show after guest hosting for Sean Hannity. And, um, boy, that's interesting. I mean, doesn't he have something else to do, like be governor of Florida? I mean, how do those things work? You would think that they would be mutually exclusive, wouldn't you? So that was out today. And then we've got this. So this is Lauren Boebert. You got to love her. So what she's doing here is she's saying, great to see the Colorado contractors. My community project funding request signed into law secured 20 plus million for Colorado water and infrastructure projects. I also passed a provision into law that got $28.44 billion from the Highway Trust Fund to improve infrastructure in rural America. You know, the sad thing is she voted against it, folks. I mean, people of Colorado should know what they're dealing with. She voted against the infrastructure bill that did exactly what she just said she voted for. I mean, it's insane. Absolutely insane. And then you've got Donald Trump... And this really bothers me for some reason that Donald Trump gets out there and he's talking about the Wall Street Journal reporter, Evan Gershkovich. And let's just play it and listen to what he says. So this was today. Gershkovich, the reporter for the Wall Street Journal who is being held by Russia, will be released almost immediately after the election, but definitely before I assume office. He will be home. He will be safe. Vladimir Putin, president of Russia, will do that for me, and I don't believe he'll do it for anyone else. You know, he thinks it sounds good, and that's the problem with a guy like this. He thinks something like that sounds good. So he's holding Evan Gershkovich like a carrot in front of all of America to say, if you vote for me, I'm going to release this man, and he's going to be happy and healthy and yada, 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 yada. Well, how about the human humanity of it, folks? I mean, this is what really grips me about this guy is he doesn't get this. He has no, he has no compassion. He does not have understanding on that level to realize that he should be talking to Putin every day. He should be emailing him. He should be calling him, whatever the hell it takes. He should be working to get the man released today rather than dangle it as a carrot to the American public that if you vote for me, this man's going to be released. I mean, he's sick. You're sick in the head, Donald Trump. You should be busting your butt to get that guy out of prison today. I mean, it shouldn't be contingent on whether or not you become president and look, you know, if you're working with Putin, you can say, you know what, I tried today, I tried yesterday, I'm going to try every day to get this man released. It doesn't matter if I become president or not. I am going to work to get him released because it's not fair. I mean, damn. I just don't, I just don't get it sometimes with this guy, folks. So then you've got Dr. Anthony Fauci. God bless him. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene couldn't even call him a doctor. Right, that's how bitter she is, but, you know, whatever. I think we all get it. But he was put through hell on all sorts of things like the distancing. Where did you come up with the distancing? My God, if somebody's got the flu or if somebody's got the cold, that's where the distancing comes from. You know, you don't have to be a genius to figure out that you can't get close to somebody that's got the flu. I mean, have we given up the fact that the flu is transmitted through an aerosol through somebody's breast? Every time somebody exhales, there it goes. Right. So you just pick the amount of distance that you want to stand away from somebody. And for me, you know, I never got anything, you know, knock on wood, but I got every shot there was. I got uh, the shots. I wore the mask. You know, who cares? It's what you do. You know, next time around, if, if somebody doesn't want to wear the mask, the hell with them. Let it go. Just let it go. But the thing I want to talk about here, folks, the point of it is the hell that they put this man through. And he's there voluntarily today. He. <laughs> He's retired now for 18 months. He doesn't have to be here going through it. But I just want to play this one clip of the hell that they put this guy through. Politically polarizing, alternately idolized or demonized. Overnight, Fauci saying the vitriol he faces, including on Capitol Hill, means he still gets death threats even while out of government service. 
you have performances like that unusual performance by Marjorie Taylor Greene in today's hearing. Those are the kind of things mm -hmm. that drive up the death threats. Testifying emotionally now about the death threats his family has faced. It so I got to just pause it here for a second, folks. So they're going to ask him, and he's going to explain that his daughters have received death threats. And look at that little Republican staffer in the back. You just want to go over and just like push him off his chair and tell him to get the hell out of the room. He thinks it's funny. He sticks his bottom lip out and he's like, boo hoo for you. And then when they finally ask him, how does that make you feel? And Dr. Fauci says, terrible. He just kind of like just revels in it. You can tell he's soaking it up. I mean, what sort of people are we dealing with here? In any other environment, in any other circumstance, folks, that guy would have just been pushed off his chair, out the door, you know, and whatever, you're, you're out of a job. I mean, that kind of behavior is ridiculous, but it's what we're getting right now with the Republican side. Have a look. It is very troublesome to me. Um, it is much more troublesome because they've involved my wife and my three daughters. Jeez, that guy in the back. At these moments, how do you feel? Terrible. That was NBC's Hallie Jacks mm. uh, reporting. Willie, it, it really is. It, it, it's extraordinary that they've taken a man who's committed his life to public service and tried to demonize him over masks. You know, the guy's yelling, why didn't you do clinical trials like on masks and six feet yeah. distances? We were in the middle of a pandemic that would kill millions of people. Yeah. They didn't know. They had to do best efforts at the time. Folks, it, it's crazy. But then, you know, I'm not done with Donald Trump yet. Then you've got this other clip, and the reporter asked Donald Trump, the question is, what is your relationship with God like? What is your relationship with God like? And I can answer that question because I went to a Christian school for 12 years, right? Grew up in a Christian family. Um, I, I can answer that question, but evidently Donald Trump is having trouble answering that question. He just throws out like a word salad. Bleh. You know, it's like anything but the answer, folks. Have a listen to this. I know that you've said before that you've been sustained by the prayers of lots of Americans. I've seen pictures of people yeah. praying oh, over it's, you. It's incredible, actually. Her question is, um, she says, you've been faced with so much adversity and persecution for years. What's your relationship with God like, and how do you pray? That's Sharon from Alabama. Okay, so I think it's good. I do very well with the evangelicals. I love the evangelicals. And I have more people saying they pray for me. I can't even believe it. And they are so uh, committed and they're so, they're so believing. They, they, they say, sir, you're going to be okay. I pray for you every night. I mean, ev everybody, almost. I'm sure everybody's praying for a man that had a tryst with a porn star and then got convicted. You know, Jesus, have mercy. I can't say everybody, but almost everybody that sees me, they say it. It's such a beautiful thing. You know what's a beautiful thing, too? When you look at all of this bad stuff going on, they have nothing to look up to. They have no God. They have no anything. They kill people. They beat people. They push people into subways. They so There's just nothing there. Religion is such a great thing. It's so, it keeps you, you know, there's something to be good about. You want to be good. You want to, it, it's so important. And I don't know if it's explained right. I don't know if I'm explaining it right right now. But when you have something like that, you want to be good. You want to go to heaven, okay? You want to go to heaven. If you don't have heaven, you almost say, oh, what's, what's, what's the, the reason? Yeah. Why do I have to be good? Let's not be good. What difference does it make, right? I, I really, I don't don't know what to say. Uh, religion uh, is a good thing, um, was his reaction. He was asked, what's your relationship with the God? He said, uh, well, I do good with evangelicals. Asked about <laughs> his prayer life. He says, uh, people come to him and say, sir, I pray for you mm. <laughs> every night. <laughs> yeah, we're all praying for Donald Trump, but the prayers are sort of a little different on many different planes, right, folks? So that is some of the wacky stuff that went on today, and I just can't wait for tomorrow. Till then.